okay, this episode of Inuyashiki, I honestly should have reacted to it. Like, I honestly should have did a live reaction to this episode because it was one of those episodes that definitely would have been good to live react to just because of the core content within it. I was on the edge of my seat throughout the entirety of this episode wondering something bad is going to happen. Like, something is bad. Like, something really bad is going to happen to these characters. I, I just had that feeling throughout the entirety of the episode. But getting right into it, though, this episode is pretty depressing. But it ends on a happy note, which made me smile. I was very happy with the way the episode overall concluded, and I will get into it. But before that, I want to talk about something. I made a mistake last week, and many of you were quick to correct me, but just in case some of you were not aware of the mistake I made last week in my previous Inuyashiki review, I want to correct it here, because I made a mistake, and I will admit I made a mistake, and I just want to make sure I clarify some things. You remember how I said in my previous review, Hero was the old man? Well, I was wrong. Apparently, the hero is the main name to the main antagonist. So, you know, the antagonist, the teenager, his name is Hero. So, very sorry about that. Made a mistake, but I just want to admit I made a mistake. And basically, if you're confused in any way, yeah, it's because I made an error. So, anyway, so that being said, let's get into this episode. This episode starts off with a very grim tone. We see this woman that is lying down on a bed. And we find out that she's... She's dead. Like, she, she's GG. She's gone. And you can automatically assume what happened here. You look at the scene. You see how she's unclothed. You see the needles and stuff all around. You see this dude that has tattoos. Looks like, you know, a mafia type dude and all that. You could assume what kind of happened. Basically, he said she OD'd, which most likely is the truth. However, he was the cause of the OD. It wasn't that the woman OD'd because she wanted to, she od because the man forced it upon her. And it's just a very dark and grim start to the episode. Very edgy, by the way. Like, extremely edgy. But literally, as soon as that scene is done, about 30 seconds later, we have it to where there is, like, a, uh, like a hot tub type, like, bath scene, where, like, it's a steam bath. We have a scene like this happen right after that, and you see the dude carry on with his duties, and he's trying to get into, like, the steam bath. You have this dude taking a spot, and basically the mafia guy that, you know, obviously was responsible for the girl's death at the beginning is like, move out of the way, I need you to move. And the man's like, what are you doing? No, I'm not moving out of the way. And the man basically is like, suck it. And he's like, huh, what are you talking about? And basically, suck his, you know, dick. And I'm like, what? Like, like what? So, it, it was like a really, like, messed up and edge start to the episode i'm like okay so this man he's basically exerting his dominance upon everyone around him basically saying he's the man nobody should mess with him if you tell him what to do he's gonna make sure your life is miserable he's that type of character that's basically how the start of the episode was showcasing how evil this man was and they got it across really quickly like the the writer and the animators of this episode and all that they got it across really quickly that this man was a heinous individual that obviously just is just complete Gum. But anyways, once that's all said and done, we move over into a happier scene. And when we got after, you know, the opening song, I assumed that the girl we saw was the girl that was dead at the beginning of the episode. That That's what I assumed. I thought we had like a flash forward, and then we had it to where we went to the past again to see the events prior. That's what I thought was going on. That's what I assumed throughout the entirety of the episode when you see the girl, you know, on the bed and all that. I'm like, Okay, so this obviously means that she's going to die. So, throughout the entire episode, I was on the edge of my seat, worried and all that, like, okay, something bad's gonna happen, she's dead. Because we didn't really get to see the girl's face, and the way we see the, the way she was laying, it looked like it's the same girl. So we see it to where eventually she's kidnapped, and the dude that you know was responsible for all the stuff in the beginning of the episode, he initiates what he wants to do, the girl looks like she was injected with, you know, drugs and stuff, it looks like she's gonna overdose, and one scene leads to another where you think all hope is lost. She fights back, manages to get away, get a little bit of hope, and you're like, oh, wow, she got away. But then, he pops up in her house, and almost kills the person she wants to marry, which I was like, oh, like, it, it's just, it was playing with my feels throughout the entirety of the episode, like, like I said, I thought she was gonna die one minute, then she was gonna live, then die, it was going back and forth, it was playing with my feelings, and when the old man was just sitting there, he finally came out, I'm like, yes, like, he came in, he's coming to save the day, he's gonna save everyone, everything's gonna be good, but then, things went rather south, 
He got shot in the head for some reason. He went unconscious. Now, I don't know exactly what happened, but most likely it must be like a switch or something. Maybe where he was shot in the back of the head is like a switch that deactivates him for a little bit. Had no idea, like a reboot button. Since he is a robot, most likely he has like a reboot button. Like, you know, reset. You know when you uh, like turn on a console or a computer, you have a button and all that? That could be what happened. Maybe a bullet that hit the back of his head most likely resets you know him in some way to where he like reboots up operations like his operating system so that's most likely what happens anyways though after he gets knocked out and when you see the dude that basically looks like he he died you're like he's not going to be able to save him and when you see how the man's not brought back and all that when he tries to heal him it feels like all hope is lost I and mean, he's like praying to god he's like god please god please and he's trying to you know probably give him cpr and all that bring this man back and the man breathes once again, which is a very emotional moment. You see how hope has returned. The man is back. And the old man, he gets a phone call. And then he's like, I'm coming for the girl. And then all I could think in my head was, was that famous line was, I, I will find you. And I will kill you. And I'm like, are you serious? Like, are, are you serious? Like, the old man straight up. Like, that's exactly what it looked like when he's like, I'm coming for the girl. And he was on the phone. I'm like, this old man's about to be epic. He's about to go in against the mafia and all that. People are trying to kidnap women and stuff. This man is about to just wreck house. I'm like, I'm pretty excited for this. So when he starts going through the air and all that, uh, hunting this man down, eventually when he lands and he just punches people in the side. I was like, yo, like, this is epic. Like, this is really epic. So, just the entirety of the events, like I said, it was like a teeter-totter. I was like, okay, is Hope there? Is Hope not here? Is going back and forth? And I was just really liking the tone of the episode and how it was trying to constantly deceive me. Eventually, basically, he attacks the dude that has the woman and he manages to finish all of them off. Now, I do like exactly how he handled this situation. From what we can assume is, is he, he paralyzed everybody and also removed all sense of sight. So, they will no longer be able to do anything. That's what he said. Basically, they will have to be, you know, I guess, watched over for their entire life. People have to watch over them, care for them and all that, take care of them because they can't even eat, feed themselves. They can't even end their own lives because they are paralyzed and also they can't see. So it's messed up, but the old man was like, the reason why I did this to you is for you could reflect on your entire life, for you can reflect to your final days and realize what heinous stuff you all have done and maybe you all can repent for what you have done. I was like, whoa, this old man, like he is... He's being pretty, pretty epic right now. Like, holy crap. I mean, I guess he's pushing into the boundary of, like, almost crossing the line completely. And I honestly thought he was going to kill everyone. I, that's what I assumed was going to happen. Like, he was going to kill every single individual. But that didn't happen, and they were all just paralyzed. Which, in a way, when you think about it, what he did to the Mafia is honestly like a fate worse than death. It really is. Because when you think about death everything's over, okay? Regardless of how you feel about the afterlife, what you think the afterlife is, okay? Just regardless. Let's just negate that completely, okay? Regardless of that, you gotta imagine, death most likely would have been easier than being paralyzed and without sight. Because you could possibly live like this for 10 years, couple years, 10 years, to another 30 years. It, it could go on for a long time. And if you're around your 20 years old, there's a possibility you could have 50 years stuck like that which would suck so when you factor all of this stuff in what the old man did to them was a fate worse than death and honestly i can't help but feel bad for them but at the same time it's karma because what they have done they've taken so many lives i guess it's time they realize what they have done they can't always do that type of stuff without some form of consequence so I wonder, how do you all feel about that? How do you all feel about what the old man did to everybody, like the mafia and all that? Do you think it was, like, a right thing he did? Should he have turned them into the police or, I mean, like, tied them up or something and turned them into the police? Or should he have, like, killed them? I mean, just let me know your honest thoughts. I'm very curious on what you, all of you feel about that scene because it's a very dark outlook. Because when you think about what the teenager does, he at the very least puts them down. He puts them down. While what the old man did... He makes them suffer for long periods of time, which I know he's not personally trying to do that. He doesn't get happiness out of that. He just, he ma he's making it to where they realize what they have done. And so, let me know your honest thoughts. How do you feel about that? Please be honest in the comments below how you feel about, you know, that concept. But anyways, though, everything ends well, and the dude gets his girl back, and everything is fine. I thought it was a very good way to just kind of do the episode. I mean, the animators to the writer did a very good job with this episode, and the content of the episode, it's just, it was really good. And so, 
I have to admit, I'm really liking Nuyashiki. I, I do think this is still one of the potential best anime of fall of anime 2017. Now, I do admit that this episode was a little bit edgy. I'm not even gonna lie, it was definitely edgy, but it was a good episode regardless. I, I think everybody can agree it was that type of episode that was just really enjoyable. So, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How you felt about this week's episode of Nuyashiki. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Please be honest in the comments below. I love you guys. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.